Hello everyone and welcome to Lifestyle. I'm Denise Simons, your host, and this is a show about bringing life into your home and helping you create your style. And we do it all by giving you tips and inspiration and resources right here in Middle Tennessee to create everything you see on the show. You might say that I'm your style encourager and something you may not know about me, but when I get a new client, one of my favorite things to do is to go in their attic or go in their basement or in their closets because they have the best collections in there. People gather things from their trips, they gather things from family members that have been passed down, but then they don't know what to do with them, so they just cram them in the attic. Well, if you've got a load of collections but you don't know how to display it, well, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about tonight. I helped this couple, they had over 400 baskets for what to do. They were very expensive too, and I'll be showing you that. Also, I'll show you how to create a floral arrangement for the upcoming 4th of July. And what do you do with reclaimed wood? Well, you hear it, it's a, such a buzzword. It's all green design. Well, it's more than just floors. You can use it on countertops too, so we'll be talking about that. And Jennifer Markanik is here with Timeless Interiors, and she's gonna talk to us about the difference between a facelift and a remodel. And we're talking about your home, of course. And she will be talking to us also Michael Vogt is here and he has a brand new product that he brought over from Europe from California Closets. We'll be talking about all that, but right now I want to show you what I did with all of these baskets where I brought harmony for this couple into their home. Take a look. What do you do when you're merging two lifestyles and two collections into one home? Well, I'm going to tell you about it today. I did exactly that at Bill and Kara's home. When I first started working with Kara and Bill, it was really interesting because they had so many collections. I mean, we had the Longerberger baskets and we had the dead animals and then we had the airplanes. And, but it was great because really that's what I love is bringing out the personality of the people who live there. Denise has done an amazing job of helping us make it our home instead of a house. We've actually been able to um, use things from my life and things from his life and combine them together and make it our home. When you meet Kara, she is so warm and cute and inviting. And then I met Bill, who is, when I first met him, we literally, I showed him the plan for the house and he was really quiet and I got really nervous because I thought, I knew they hadn't really worked with a designer and I thought, I could see the calculator working in his brain at the moment. When I first heard we had, we were going to have an interior design person facelift come to our house, I freaked out. <laughs> All I could think about was, oh, what is this going to cost? Um, trying to put everything together was tough. Um, I felt like we needed a push. We needed someone to help us figure out who we were. First, I want you to look at some before pictures. As you can see, we had tan walls, and we wanted to keep the furniture that was existing but we needed an inspiration piece. And I found exactly that in this beautiful handmade quilt by Kara. And as you can see, there's gorgeous colors that I could bring out. We have the navies, the sage greens, and also some of the rust colors. So this became the inspiration for the room, and I used the navy on the walls. Whenever you use a darker color on the walls, you have to use less accessories and it really brings the room down to a more human scale. Now look at this other before picture. As you can see, the floor blended in with the furniture and the walls, and the accessories were small in scale, and you see the lamp gets sort of swallowed up by the big sofa. And while the art sketch was interesting, the framing was simple and small in scale compared to the wall size. Now here's a tip to remember. When working in a large room, make sure your accessories Match the scale of the room and you'll get better results. Are you ready to see the room? Remember that inspiration piece, that quilt? Well, originally it was hanging on a traditional quilt rack, but what I did is I had it framed in this beautiful bird's eye maple frame that is an ebony stain. It really makes such a statement in the room. Now, look above and you'll see one of Bill's, it actually came off one of Bill's airplanes and that is this beautiful propeller. Look at the wood stain. It is beautiful against this navy wall. Now, as you look at the sofa, we've added the rust color as well as some striped pillows. Now, here's a tip. Whenever you're buying pillows, go ahead and upgrade and get some feather down pillows. 
they're great because you can kind of put that designer karate chop there right in the middle. And it adds so much color for not very much money. Now, remember the lamps that we had before? Well, I actually discovered that they had some more lamps downstairs that I could use. These lamps were the right size, the right scale for the room, but it had a white shade. So I changed out the shade to the black shade and voila, it's like a party for your lamp and it looks great. So always remember that you want to make sure that your accessories are the right scale. Now look at this corner of the room. In this corner that was practically unnoticed before, here is the same chair in white canvas. Now see it pop against this navy wall. Look at the accessories. This is the sketch of Bill's plane reframed in a wormwood black frame. It's four inches thick and it's arranged with their black and white photos. And once this is installed, what a dramatic statement. Kara said that she really wanted this room to feel warm and comfortable and very cozy. So I thought putting a window treatment as you enter the room gave it a little bit of mystery. This nine foot panel on both sides that are flanking the entrance to the room are in a tan linen. And it has a trim of black velvet all the way down. It's pulled back with this natural tassel that's really oversized. Now, I wanna show you the top of this window treatment. This pineapple finial really caps and creates such a great look in this black finish. With both of these window treatments on either side, it's an elegant touch to these window treatments. Now for the element of surprise. When Kara texted me and said, I've got a few baskets I'd like to use in the room. Well, here, here's the shot. All I could text back was OMG. I started collecting and collecting more. So um, through that, I realized at one point, my, actually my grandfather counted one day in my house, I had over 300 baskets. There were a lot of baskets, but I will tell you, it was my favorite part of the room. Before, we just had a cabinet on a tan wall. But with this navy wall, all of her collection of baskets just pop. You can see these beautiful, intricately designed Lagerberger baskets. You can see the detail, the straps. Some of them even have beautiful colors. And the way we've hung them together really makes a statement in the room. We've also used his pheasant. So we're marrying both his and her collection. One of my passions is uh, I, I love the outdoors. I love to bird hunt, I uh, love to fish, and I uh, love to fly. The shot that I made to, to uh, bring this bird down was, was uh, a lot of fun. It really turned out fantastic. I was so pleased, and they really were pleased too. The great news is this. We've only spent what we wanted to spend well within our own budget. She took what we had, blended it together, added her touch to it, and, and just made it awesome. We were just really happy with where we are. I love to look in people's closets. I like to see what they have behind the scenes and bring out their personality. You know, because I, after I leave their home, it's not about me, it's about them. So when you're trying to merge the two collections together, it really could be a great marriage. I hope that you feel inspired in your own home. You know, it's amazing how a collection can become really a piece of art, really an art wall. My husband has several guitars, well, many guitars, and he has an entire wall of them, electric guitars and acoustic guitars, and they have all these different wood finishes and tones and colors. And they really are beautiful all together. I always tease him and say, you're going to have to sell one of those pieces of furniture on the wall. But it is beautiful. So if you have a collection, think about gathering them all together and displaying them together. Well, coming up, we're going to be talking to uh, so many people, and we're going to talk about your home. We hope to talk to you. Jennifer Markanik is here with Timeless Interiors, and Michael Vogt is here with Calhoun Closet. So that's coming up after the break. We'll be back.
that, that like, mm-hmm. your voice will be stuck in there. Mm-hmm. Like, you were born way back in that way. You have to do it again. Because you just T- have to. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can I read it? All right. And then Jennifer, mm-hmm. she wants to do it. Can you count? Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you, you, mm-hmm. you can. Mm-hmm. Articulating in my head. Okay. So it's going to count the whole time. Mm-hmm. Well, she's empty your glass, sorry. Empty it. Can you count one more time? Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ding! Yay! She's done. Yeah. Or maybe not. Oh, snap. Ooh, look at the pretty talk of the town coming up. Mm. Is it blue on that one? Oh, oh it has to be on that one. Oh, okay. Mike wanted the one that's wet. This is why we check them. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, 737 plus 7587. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah, we'll go ahead and throw it out there. So, not much action on the phone tonight? Uh, Not on this segment, no. When we go out of this segment, I'll tease um, the uh, tasty treat from the kitchen and flowers. Can you count one more time? After the break. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We good? Seven. Okay. Can you speak up a little bit more when you talk? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, we're back in the studio, and we're excited to take your calls at 737-PLUS. That's 737-7587. Write that down. I know you you are here every Monday night talking with us and listening to our advice, and we'd love to answer any questions you have about your home. Well, we're talking tonight about a facelift and remodel. Not necessarily a remodel of your face, but we're talking about your home. And sometimes you need a facelift and sometimes you need a remodel. And we're going to be talking about what's the difference. We're also announcing a brand new product right here on the show. We're going to get right to it with our guest. I'm so excited to welcome back my good friend, oh, Jennifer Markanik of Timeless Interiors. You are fabulous, and I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here again, Denise. Thank you. Absolutely. My two faves. And, <laughs> uh, you know, Michael, every time you're on, we get so many comments. You give the best advice. Michael Vote of California Closet Secrets. Great to be back. Thanks for having me, Denise. You're welcome. And um, one of the things that we talk about, we've been kind of chit-chatting um, around, and so many people have done business with both of you, and I'm excited to have you back on the show. But for those that haven't seen you, will you tell us what you do, Jennifer, and uh, where you're located and what you do? Yes. Uh, my company is Timeless Interiors. I'm an interior designer. Um, I offer full-scale interior design, whether it's from a remodel, renovation, uh, new construction, or just decorating. Absolutely. And Michael Vogt, mm-hmm. you're back with California yes, Closets. Tell us about it. California Closets is a 35-year-old company that specializes in organizing people's lives. Um, that's the short version. The long version is we build custom storage in people's homes to help them to eliminate clutter and chaos and to create order and peace in their lives around the things that matter in their home. I love that. I mean, I love that you both have such a philosophy. I was looking at um, your website, Jennifer, and some of the things that you were talking about with scale and balance and harmony. And really, it's all about, it's not just about decorating your home, but it's really about how you feel in your home. It's not really how it looks. It was interesting. We all, uh, the designers, we had this big, um, conference and one of the questions that she asked all of us was all about how we she asked us to list um, 
how we felt in the space, mm -hmm. and it was all emotional based. You mm -hmm. would have thought to have that many designers, 46 designers were there, we would have all written down like, you know, our global views rug or to thinking rug or, you know, but it was all about the emotion. So Jennifer, I want to uh, talk with you about one of the things you talk about on your website, and you have a fabulous website, by Thank the way. You, you put Thank so you. much thought into that. You are a published interior designer. You are um, not only that, but you ran an amazing contest recently. And I mean, you placed it right with all of these amazing designers. Tell us more about what you do, and we also have some pictures for you too. Right, well, I think the biggest thing you touched on it was about how you feel in the space. Mm -hmm. And that is the first thing I do when I meet a new client. We're looking at redoing a space. And what I say is, number one, how do you want to feel in the space? So that's so right. important. From how they want to feel, I take what we're after kind of um, from that perspective and look at the design principles that I use. And you mentioned that about balance and scale and proportion. Um, these are so important because there are places that most people make mistakes is with scale, balance, and proportion. Exactly. And let's talk about the face look. Now, we, sometimes <laughs> we don't need a pure overhaul, ladies. We just need a little touch-up here and there. <laughs> uh, but tell us about that in your home. How, exactly. how does that work? Well, pretty much, um, there are three ways I look at a space. Somebody either needs the facelift, which is just cosmetic, or they need to re replace. Which is Take like wallpaper and paint, paint and something simple. Simple, simple, simple things. Yeah. Sometimes they need to replace what exists. Maybe that the layout of the space is good, but the elements are dated. So That's kind of like a nose job. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, sort of. A little, uh, not as painless as a full overhaul, okay. but more than the little facelift. And then the other is when we've got to totally revamp the space. We've got to gut it. Right. We've got to gut it and yeah. move walls and do the big job. Let's look at those pictures you brought. Yeah, so that tells a story. Yeah, the first one is, this is just the look of a little facelift. This is a 1990s house. And what happened here is we kept the tile. The tile, I don't know if you, you can really see it there, but it was white tile, classic, never goes out of style. Um, kept the countertops. All we did was paint the count ca the cabinetry. We'll see. And then oh, did you want to go back? Yeah, if we can go back. Okay. Check. Real quick, we just painted the cabinetry, changed light fixtures, changed faucets, painted the room. Simple. The next one, you'll see that this is a before. Basically, a timeless room, except for what's dating that is that mirror, that big plate of mirror. Oh, so this is what we did here. All that happened in this space, as you see, we took out the big plate mirror, put in new, beautifully framed. Um, mirrors, changed the sconces to be on either side, mm -hmm. painted the walls. Simple facelift. Right. Simple, but it really makes an impact and it, up, mm -hmm. it literally updates it. Exactly. This next one, this is now the next level of remodel and this is replacing the, the fixtures uh, it way, the way they are. 1990s again, very dated, but the flow of the space is good. The layout is good. So this is the before. This is the during and I think this is important because when we're at this level, it's mm -hmm. going to be messy. We're going to be ripping things out. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a little longer than the facelift. So this is the during. This is the wow. after. Wow. Again, everything's in the same place that it was as far as the fixtures, the plumbing, the electrical, but we've replaced everything. Right. Updated finishes. This will last a long Love time. It. You know, what? Uh, and you've really given a great description for everyone. Um, just the description to us, the differences, and uh, sometimes we just need a little makeup you know, little makeup on would, would do well. Paint, uh, changing the mirrors out, but then sometimes you need to gut it. And a little bit later, we're going to talk a little bit more with Jennifer. She's got so many great ideas. Um, also about literally taking it all out. And when you have to move mm -hmm. plumbing, that's when you're going to need a plan. Well, Michael Vogt, I am so excited. And I, I, I have to try to not get ahead of myself <laughs> because after coming over to your new studio, and seeing all of the new fixtures that you brought, I went home and talked to my husband. I said, oh, we, we're going to need this one, mm -hmm. and we're going to need, you know, the match. And I know we're not talking about the showroom right off, but I'm excited because you always bring something new to our show yep. and to Nashville. So tell me about where this new product came from, because you had so many different products in your store. Yeah, we've, we've brought something new uh, to the marketplace that uh, we've existes, exists in Europe and has existed in Europe for some time, mm -hmm. but it's a different way of accomplishing organization. And we call it Virtuoso, and it's just simply a different way of constructing storage within the home. Um, 
The virtuoso system is the idea of creating a floating shelf concept, which if you look at some of the more progressive design magazines, you'll see shelves that look like they're just suspended in the air. Mm -hmm. um, and that works great in areas where you just you know need shelves in a media center or in a bookcase, but you can do it in closets as well. Um, it's just a really unique contemporary look and feel. And what I love about this, and we're going to show some pictures too, but what I love about this is that it's um, there's no sides to mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's literally, right. it's all horizontal. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's almost striking when you first look at it because it sort of it stops you in your tracks when you see it. Whenever you think of a bookcase, you've got uprights, you've got vertical pieces that, of course, hold either side of the shelf. When you have a drawer, you have either side of the upright that holds the drawer. Um, we've eliminated the uprights in this form of construction, Ooh, so it looks even. less bulky. Yeah. Let's, yeah, let's see go to some pictures. photos. <laughs> pictures worth it. Oh, this was fabulous. This this becomes almost like a I don't know a conversation piece if this is your media center. Uh -huh. So you can see the very broad, overstated horizontal lines. There's no uprights uh, in the section here on the right hand side in the gray. Um, it's just long, overstated, horizontal floating shelves. And you can literally mix and match totally. all of your uh, finishes. You, you have got it. so many you in got the it. studio. Absolutely. Yep. So that's an example of a media center. Here's the same concept applied to a closet. Um, and you can see you've got the hanging rods up above, and you've got space for shoes and handbags and such down below. You can still put drawers in a concept like this, as you're able to see. So you don't sacrifice that in this design. Um, but again, it's just it's a slightly different way of accomplishing storage in these parts of the home. Here's another example of a, of a closet built in this method of construction. On the left there, you can see a sliding door uh, that helps to conceal part of the clothing. In fact, I think the next closet is a man dressing in front of this fancy closet. Ah, look how organized he feels, Denise. He <laughs> is feeling good. He's listen, inspired when he starts uh, oh, his day. Listen, and I am, I'm telling you, I saw some of this in person at the studio, and I can't wait. I'm, I'm just going to wait until the next segment because <laughs> I, I, I get it ahead of myself. Now here's goal, and with this kind of a design, because it's so, I don't know, design forward or progressive, you can take some risks. Um, and so instead of just doing a monotone or a, a single color design, this we blended well, like a white gloss and then a really, really dark wood grain called Wenge, and we just offset them left and right, top and bottom, uh, just to give it a slightly more, again, contemporary and or is that art. A metal at the top? Uh-huh, yeah, it's, right? it's a brushed aluminum uh, with glass and set door on the right-hand side, just to do something a little bit different over there. I think we got one more, yeah, a couple more photos. So here's an example of someone's uh, house where you've gotten like a media center, uh, barely actually understated, but still shows that, sh that floating shelf concept on the right. And then you've got your closet on the left there. Um, and it's just, it's a simple, clean flowing design. Very simple, still organized. And there's nothing on either side. So this concept can literally be floated in the center of the room. You've you got it. You don't have to have a wall and you don't have to build a wall. We still want to anchor to a wall if we can, just, just oh, for okay, security so purposes. Oh, okay, so the back wall, but no side wall. That's exactly right. Because, see, you can see here, yep. I mean, if you're putting your accessories on it, uh -huh. it can be open. Oh, I absolutely, mean, absolutely. Yeah. And that's just, again, it's just a slightly different, more modern or contemporary look to it for the consumer that's looking to break away from some of the traditional design features. Well, the other thing, too, it's a beautifully open piece of space. Totally. That's what's so wonderful mm -hmm. about it, because that's the trick that we always try to do is make a small space feel larger. Right. By Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's very sturdy, too. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, I I'll mean, show one you. Of, one of the things that I did when I was in your studio is I, I went over and I really pushed on it. You know, I tried to hang on it with my It weight. was embarrassing when I was, I was watching you doing chin-ups. It was I like, know, get down. I was just, oh, I was like, mm, you know, I'm really trying to work on the arms, ladies. You know how you just have to keep working on those arms. So when I was over in the studio, you know, I'm just doing chin-ups. But, you know, it held me up. So I know that those are... <laughs> <laughs> Those are really Absolutely. sturdy. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about, um, when we come back, I do want to talk about where those are from. Yes, can you tell me real quick? I can. Where, where are those from? Uh, the short version is we, as California Closets, send people to Europe every year on kind of a scouting trip. Uh, most of the trends and themes and design that we see in America usually came from Europe several years prior. Um, and so we send scouting teams to, to Europe and specifically to the Milan Furniture Fair every year to see what's going to be coming down the pike and hitting our shores in several years. And we want to stay in front of that um, by trying to spot the themes for color and texture and, and uh, just layout building materials. So if we can source those on the front side, we're able to more uh, protect our position as the market leader in our category. I love that because you're always just spot on, spot on. Well, one of the things that I want to uh, tell you is that the dresses that you see me wear is always from Cache, and they're in the 
three has not. Go by and see them. Tell them that Lifestyle sent you. They only cost coupons, so we'd love for you to visit them. Also coming up, a floral arrangement that you can is actually edible and is a, really adds a sparkle to maybe the holiday your Fourth of July coming up. That's coming up after the break. I'm sorry, did you tell? I thought I heard you tell me break. She did. Okay, are you there? Oh, no worries. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We could. No worries. Um, what if we? You know what? We'll just uh, put it in the show next week. It's no worries. We mentioned them. That's good. So we'll we'll do that. No worries, Marlena. I'm sorry. I thought I was tricking you. Do you want to circle back at all on the scale balance? What scale? Uh, because you are going to be talking about, now we're talking about yeah, yeah, plans. I'm, I'm, you're, you're trying to help me with what you're talking about with the scale balance portion. Okay. So my scale is going to be the scale balance plan. Do we have this traditional home here? And also we need the uh, hmm. prop, prop guy. Denise, if we can, at some point in time on the second half, uh, get to the question of, so who, what kind of consumer does this appeal to? Okay. It's probably not a bad idea to kind of flag who's, who's the buyer of this kind of a product. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Beautiful. It's kind of heavy, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yes, we do. Thank you. Nothing is more dramatic than a flower arrangement in a glass container. And I'm gonna give you some designer tips on how to make one. First, we're going to need to purchase our flowers. Look at these gorgeous flowers that I purchased. Here are some beautiful sunflowers. You're going to need two bunches of sunflowers. And then look at these. These are called Bells of Ireland. And they really do just have some tiny little bells. What I like about them is they follow the sun, so they really kind of swirl and twirl once you create something with them. Here are some Ilex berries. We're also going to use a little element of surprise, some tangerine. Now you can also use lemons and limes if you want to. So let's get started. No, I didn't grow two feet, but it's going to take a ladder to get to this floral arrangement. I love this big container. I actually bought this at just one of the craft stores locally. It's almost three foot high. First, we're going to fill it up with our citrus. So whatever you decide to use in yours would be fine. I decided to use tangerine. And this is great because this serves kind of like what Oasis would be. It holds all the stems in place. Now we're gonna add our water. Now we've placed our citrus in our glass container and we're ready to use the flowers. Now I'm using my nippers that I use outdoors, but you could use scissors if you want to. We're not gonna cut a lot off of the stems because we want this arrangement to be really tall. So as you go, just clip a little bit off the end just so that it can get a drink and then see how you place them inside the citrus in this case, the tangerine, and it keeps it in place, much like Oasis. We're gonna keep adding some more. Okay, now we've placed all of our sunflowers, so now we're ready for the Bells of Ireland. Keep placing your Bells of Ireland throughout so that they're evenly dispersed some a little bit taller and some a little shorter. I love how spirally they are. Now
now we're ready to place the ilex berries throughout. Again, wherever there's a little space, what you want to do is tuck these berries right inside. Look at the texture it brings and so much color. You know what? This would be great if you're entertaining in your home or you just want that great citrus pop of color. This really makes such a statement in this room with the sunflowers and the citrus pop. So now you know how to create a beautiful arrangement like this in your own home. Now that would be a fun arrangement to make for your 4th of July party celebration. You could also add, do you know what ting ting is? It's some of those little sparkly things that are made of wood that can come up and out. That would really add a little sparkle to your table. Also coming up, we always like to talk about repurposing, and we're gonna be talking about heart pine. Now, how to use it. You can use it on the floor, but you can also use it for a countertop. We're gonna show you that right after the break. This piece of hardywood pine came out of This piece of hardywood pine came out of an abandoned building. You know, there are companies who actually take old churches, old buildings, and old homes that are going to be destroyed. They take all the wood out, and then they grind it down to the original finish, and it still has all this warmth and character. And then they'll make it into a piece of furniture for you. Well, I created this custom cabinet that you see behind me but I wanted to have a really warm and inviting, something that I could actually use, butcher block top. And they took this piece 
and we stained it with an edible stain so that we can actually use this for a chopping block. What I love about it is that it has such character, but it is also very functional. It's a great way to repurpose. Um, also, it's two inches thick, so it's really got some depth to it. Anyway, it made a great piece, and I love the fact that it has a great story to it. So the next time you want a countertop, why don't you consider a reclaimed piece? We're back in the studio, and we're excited to take your calls. We'd love to hear from you at 737-PLUS. That's 737-7587. Well, one of the things I was telling Michael a little earlier is that when I watch House Hunters International, I notice that they take their, in Europe, and we talked about this, they will take their kitchens with them. Like, they don't just leave them. So, and you know, they always say you can't take it with you when you go. Well, this virtuoso that he just showed us, you actually can. And I have clients who their maybe their children moved out and they have an extra room, but they don't necessarily want to build something in. So this product is actually perfect for that. So we're back in the studio. We're talking with Jennifer Markanik of Timeless Interiors and Michael Vogt with California Closet. Um, Jennifer, you and I were talking, I want to mention that um, Jennifer is, if you did not go to the O'More Show House Traditional Homes Magazine, it actually features some of her work, so go out and pick up one of these magazines. Congratulations, by the way, of being Thank published. You. And tell me, now we were talking about facelifts, uh, you know, just the paint and the wallpaper. Then we were talking about going a little bit more, remodeling, maybe right, taking, mm-hmm. And now we're talking about when you really want to gut, you need a plan. It's so important to get a good plan in the very beginning. Let's talk about that, and we'll show those pictures as All well. All right. Yeah, the biggest thing is this, is this is the client who says, I don't like the way my space functions. Yeah. I don't like the layout. We need to do something. So what I do is I look at the space, and I look at what the what is the envelope I have to work in. What is the, the, the outer walls, not the interior walls? We can take those out. What are my outer walls? What is my space? And what do we want to accomplish in that space? So I look at the architecture. I look at the space planning. I begin the planning process to see, how, again, how do they want to feel in the space? How are they going to use the space? And so we begin mm -hmm. to draw a plan that uh, we can work from. This is a plan uh, for a client that I'm working on right now. This is a master bathroom remodel. It's a master bath and closet. So the cool thing about this plan is uh, you can see the doorway there in the center. The doorway currently is off to the left. Mm -hmm. So I'm moving the door to the center to enter into a hallway with closets on either side with pocket doors, and then you enter into the bathroom. The great thing about this is the ceiling is vaulted. Oh, nice. So it gives it a great point. So direction. it already is It's vaulted. already vaulted. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's vaulted. So the, ex you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the shelf is fantastic. As you come in, the back wall you'll see will be windows. We're going to sit a great tub in front of that with big mm -hmm. windows. A little That's slipper tub, maybe? Oh, beautiful tub we're going to put there. And then <laughs> under these terrific windows with this 18-foot ceiling up to the vault. Okay. Uh, then on the floor, you can kind of see in the plan, on the in front of the tub is a tile rug. So this is how we're starting to get ah. beautiful materials in. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a glass beam shower. We have a beautiful vanity area, of course, a toilet area, and a kind of a linen closet area. And then to the left of the tub, we haven't totally decided what we might do there. We might do a little shape lounge. We might oh, do a chair. I like that we little might custom do a little piece of uh, cabinetry, you know, uh -huh. or antique. So this is developing with the client in mind. Uh, the dotted lines are beams that you'll see on the ceiling. So this is just developing the plan. The next picture you'll see, these are elevation We're ready. drawings. Yeah, we're ready to see so it. So these are just uh -huh. an elevation drawing. The one on the left is as you enter into the bathroom, that's the back wall. So you mm. can see the windows, we have sure. a great light fixture hanging. We'll do a piece of art over the tub. Sconces on the wall. On the right, you see this is a glass shower area. On the left, to be determined. And then the other is the opposing wall. So this is now walking out of the bathroom. Again, you see that great light fixture And what a great perspective. You're exactly. giving the client a complete perspective before you even do anything. Absolutely. Whatever it takes for the client to get it. Right. Uh, these are plans and elevations. If I need to do perspective drawings, if we need to render them, whatever the client needs to get it. And then we pick materials. So very important. Once you do have this plan, this is the time to bring your contractor in. You can start right. to get bids for the project. And then we move from there. 
That is awesome. Did we see all of your pictures there? Yes, that's okay. it. I'm awesome. talking about the client. Well, thank you so much for um, clarifying, too, because as our viewers are watching and we show so many remodels, we show, um, you know, we decorate, we remodel, we gut. So there's uh, so much level of expertise depending on what you need. And when you start moving exactly. plumbing, you want to make sure you have a plan because they're going to be waiting on you and it could cost you a lot of money if you don't have the right plan. Right. And again, we do that plan up front. We specify finishes so the right. client knows exactly what it's going to cost going into it. Absolutely. And that's so important and that's why it's important to hire the experts. Mm -hmm. And um, Mike, what we were talking about is what I love about Jennifer is she, she is timeless. I mean, she is really classic, and you guys have some classic too, but you are always trendy. Mm -hmm. And both of you guys are just hot. I mean, you're just smoking in the industry, and you always bring the best. And I'm just thrilled to have you on the show. But tell us about this product. Who is using this Virtuoso? And tell us more about it. I know you got a sample there. Yeah. Um, the Virtuoso client is someone who's probably a bit more progressive, a little bit not coloring outside the lines, but someone who's willing to break apart from some of the what I'd probably consider the design norms you'd see in a market like Nashville. We're a pretty traditional market for the most part. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of crown molding, uh, uh, a lot of great panels, so on and so forth. Um, Pull your mic up just a little oh, bit sorry. so we can hear There we go. There we go. I want to be able to hear everything you sorry have to that. say. So, I mean, but this is a little bit more modern. It is a bit more modern. It's, uh, it's someone who's looking to get uh, big, bold, clean, straight lines, a bit more contemporary. Uh, play a bit more with colors and uh, a little bit less uh, time and energy spent on decorative moldings and stuff like that. This is a bit more of a very clean, a, yeah, lines, very clean, but very sexy. I mean, it yep. really has. So, uh, you want to pull that up and we'll show that sure. sample. Yeah. So, um, in Virtuoso, this is just uh, how the shelf would look in the space. Um, but what you don't see when you're looking at it straight on is how it's actually attached to the wall. And that, to that, I'll show this perspective mm -hmm. here. You can see there are steel brackets that are extremely thin. They're less than an eighth of an eighth of an inch thick. Mm -hmm. And those mount to the sides of the unit so that when you're looking at it, you really never see how it's being held to the wall, but it's being anchored to uh, some crisscrossed um, supports that sort of mesh through the backing that's behind the shelf. And that's what keeps it rigid and sturdy. Uh, but it's all behind the decorative piece of backing, so you never see the functional part of what's keeping that shelf floating. And now, when I was at your studio, um, you had, I mean, some of these are actually boxes where you can pull out drawers, mm -hmm. some are shelving, uh, some you can do hangs. Mm -hmm. So you can use this for wardrobe. Totally. You can use it for yeah. closet. Absolutely. Just because the shelf is floating doesn't mean that nothing can be attached to it. You can hang a hanging rod on the underside of that floating shelf to put your hangers on it. Um, you can put some uprights beneath two floating shelves to be able to still get drawers that'll go into that into that system. Uh, we drill holes into the up into the highest uh, floating shelf to be able to put some recessed LED lighting in it to make it a, give a bit of a lighting accent. So yeah, yeah. it's literally layers. Uh, and what I like is uh, not only did you have all of these different finishes, and you've got to go into the new showroom. I want to talk about that a little <laughs> bit too because I got so excited. Um, he has this gentleman's area, and I told my husband all about it. I said, you've got to go over and see, because we showed the samples last time you were on, right. and it looks like a man's linen suit. And then on the backsplash, they have taken belts, mm -hmm. black belts, and created a backsplash out of black belts. But it was like oh, a cool. wall covering. It was yeah. just fantastic. When you talked about repurposing yes. in, in the segment you showed a little bit earlier and rec using reclaimed items. Those black belts you saw are from a company called Echo Domo that uh, acquires belts from Goodwill stores and then old beaten up belts uh, and they, you, they layer them across a, a, a plaque basically to make it almost like a, a design emphasis or just a focal point in the closet and then you can do something similar with guitar straps or something like that. It's just it's a really interesting visual center point of the closet. You know, that's what I like. Uh, you are so, you really are the trend in Nashville. You are bringing, you're staying ahead of the curve and really bringing to Nashville the resources that maybe before we were a little too traditional for, but now we're embracing. We're ready. Sure. And you know what? Some people don't love taking design risks, and we've got products for those customers as well. Oh, we yes, we want to have do. something for everybody, but it feels like. Uh, Previously, people who had really unique design tastes or who wanted to take a bit of a chance with the design didn't have a lot of opportunities out there. 
And so some people who see this virtuoso, they're like, wow, that's exactly what I've been looking for. I didn't know that you could do this here in Nashville. And what I love is that, again, the showroom, we'll talk a little bit more about your opening and everything mm -hmm. about that. But he also had something that appeals to moi because <laughs> I like a little sparkle. Can you tell in my dress? I like a little sparkle. And he has a entire closet wrap around with Swarovski crystals. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just fabulous. And so you got to go over and see it. It's yep. just unbelievable. Absolutely. Well, I know, Jennifer, not only do you do fabulous interiors, and we're talking about trending, but you really you had this conversation, and I looked on your website. I loved your philosophy because you talk to the client. You want to know what they love. You have a specific style. You and I both, we talked about our styles. We, we drive to market together, so we talk. But tell me more about how you do that when you go to a client, the balance, the scale, all of that. Yeah, it all starts with, sure, we all have our individual style, and my job as an interior designer is to help a client sure. find their style. What do they like? Um, oftentimes, if they don't have pictures from a magazine, I'll tell them to go to House. You know, go to House, to the House app, uh -huh. go to Pinterest, find some things, or I'll send them to my Pinterest to see. And so we pull elements of what do you like? And so we're not really copying a design sure. completely, but we're pulling mm -hmm. elements elements of spaces and how it works with their space and what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, oftentimes I'll say, what do you like about this picture that they're showing me? Well, I like this one thing. You can't assume they're showing you a picture and they like everything about the space. Sure. It might be just an element. So it's helping to pull out what is appealing to that client, match it up with the architecture that we're dealing with to have an outcome that suits the architecture, suits their style, right. and has the function involved. Too. Love it. And I think it's so fabulous, too, that we have the resources right here in Nashville that we can, I mean, we have the showrooms, we have the Peak of Trade showroom, and we can bring to you um, things that you wouldn't know existed. And oh, we're absolutely. bringing those resources to the table, um, whereas you would get online and you wouldn't know, you know, what, how Where is that going to, gonna, and mm -hmm. so, you know, the, the brain is, is, has a muscle there that you have to exercise to, uh, creatively, and you have to be able to visualize what is it that you want to, how do you want to feel in this space, and that's what we're talking about, how you want to feel in this space, and Mike, with you, you did the same thing, you logically, and we're going to be talking about that more, you'll see, uh, we're going to create a clip together, because you give the best advice, um, about how to create the right type of space for the, the planning of your closets, mm -hmm. of your interiors, and now you have this new product. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, very similar, actually. I'm, I'm amazed, or not surprised, but I guess it makes sense that our approaches would be very similar because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, every person who calls us, their first objective is to get organized. But they need to get past that to figure out what does organization look like and feel like to you? Is it about maximizing the space? Is it about just getting your shoes off the floor? Is it about creating a certain look or feel using certain colors or textures in the closet? So, you know, for us, it's uh, organization is always in the uh, uh, in part of the design process. But what do we want to do in terms of maximization of the space? How beautiful do we want it to look? And what does beauty look like? And what does it mean to you? And describe it to us. And then we can help to create just the exact blend of those three elements together using our CAD software to be able to create those 3D renderings for someone very similar to yours. So mm -hmm. you know what it is you're going to be looking at when we're all said and done. There's no guesswork involved. Absolutely. So we can dream it up for you. We can uh, exercise our creative skills, and then we can execute and get it all done for you. So make sure that you check out uh, both of their, we're going to be giving you their websites coming up, but right now, well, Bill and Kara had a collection, and I want to tell you what the inspiration was to create the home in their space. And then we'll be back to talk to you a little more right after the break.
The inspiration for this room was Kara's quilt. I pulled all the colors for the room out of this one quilt. The rust colors, the navy, the sage green that's in the sofa. When you're thinking about an inspiration for your room, make sure that it's very meaningful. Kara spent a lot of time creating this piece and it looks fantastic in her own home. Now, we did have it before on a regular quilt rack, but reframed in this bird's eye maple frame with the detailing and the ebony stain really makes this piece very important in the room. So think about that when you're creating inspiration for your room. The key design elements to create this inspirational room are specifically the color on the wall. Now, first we had a neutral color and then we brought in the navy. Remember, when you use a darker color, you don't have to use as many accessories on the wall. It just takes up more space. Also, the budget. We wanted to use the furniture that we already had. We had the sofa and some of the larger pieces in the room, so we kept those. Also, display collections. We had lots of collections in this room between his and hers, and we brought those together to create this wonderful style. The smart solution for this room is display your collections. So many times I see people spread their collections throughout the home, or they may even spread it throughout the room. But when you bring them together, it really creates this dramatic effect. Here we've used the Longaberger baskets all together. Now remember, the way you display it is really important too. Look at this hook that I used. It is a ceramic hook and it has metal on it. Well, we could have used any old nail, but this really makes it pop. So remember that. Whenever you're displaying a collection, remember this smart solution. So we're back and we're talking with Jennifer and Michael and we're learning so much. Did you learn a lot about collections and also the facelifts of your home and maybe a reconstruction or remodeling? And then we had the brand new product with the Virtuoso. We have learned so much. Well, we want to make sure that you know that um, the party's here every Monday night, but we want to make sure you know how to get in touch with us. You can also catch our Encore presentation on Tuesday at 12.30 if you missed anything on the show, or you can go to newschannel5.com and click on News Channel 5 Plus, scroll down to Lifestyle with Janine Simons and see clips from tonight's show if you miss, missed anything and you want that information. Or you can go to my website, lifestylewithdenisesimons.com, click on Contacts, Hey, I would love to add you to the Facebook, the newsletter, all of that cool stuff. And I always love hearing from you. Well, final words. Um, Jennifer, we want to know how to get in contact with you as well. And final thoughts? Yes. Uh, I guess final thoughts is anybody who's looking to change their space, yep. look up at it and think, well, what's wrong with it? Does it just need a facelift? Sure. Hmm. Do you need to replace what's in there? Or do you need to totally gut it and start all over? So Absolutely. And you can contact me through uh, my website, which is www.timelessinteriorsdesign.com. Uh, you can call me at 615-406-1986. Absolutely. And Michael Vogt, you have got a showroom. Tell I us about showroom. that. Yeah, we have a beautiful new showroom, just state of the art, with all the new stuff we're doing, from the materials we're importing from Europe and the new designs we're stealing concepts from, in, uh, from Europe. All that's incorporated in there in a beautiful new showroom in Cool Springs. Um, so that's open now to the public. We're going to have a big grand opening bash after uh, Mom reclaims the house and gets the kids back to school uh, end of August. It'll be August oh, 28th specifically. Oh, that'll be fun. We'll have a huge party, lots Absolutely. of giveaways. It's going to be fantastic. But it's open to the public now. We just want to hold off uh, and not interrupt everyone's uh, summer vacation plans until we uh, Oh, can we put up his contact there. information yep. too? Right there, there 420 Cool Springs Boulevard. There it is. And CaliforniaCloset.com. Well, we always yeah. like to end our show with a toast. Grab your drinks, and you are both just fabulous. You all are hot now. You are you are on fire, Absolutely. and I want to say a toast to both of you. Thank you for being here, and to all of you, I hope you learned something tonight, and I hope you enjoy the show. Cheers. Cheers. Woohoo! Okay, now this is gonna twirl. Woo! Ooh.
children to work in the more prosperous sugar plantations of the Dominican Republic. What strained these ties? Doing what? Doing what? A um, Dominican immigration to Puerto Rico. That is correct. When drug lord Pablo Escobar had Liberal Party leader Luis Carlos Galán assassinated, the Colombian government declared all-out war on Escobar's Medellin cartel. What did this do to the Col Colombian community in the United States? Isabel. 